Get ready for a hot one today. Temperatures should be in the 90s. The humidity will be stifling, but that doesn't bother the thousands of kids who made their way to City Field. Yeah, we'll keep them hydrated and give them some baseball as well as the Mets go for the sweep of the Cardinals. At City Field in New York, the New York Mets play the St. Louis Cardinals. Mets baseball is presented in HD by IOTV. Get the best in HD free with IOTV. And a pleasant good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to City Field. I'm Gary Cohen. Ron Darling and Ralph Connor will join me in just a few moments as the Mets try to finish off a sweep of the St. Louis Cardinals who came in here riding high, but the Mets in the first two games of this series have gotten plenty of outstanding performances. They got Reyes and Beltran back from Reyes from the disabled list, Beltran from the flu. They both paid dividends in the opener, but it was Angel Pagan and Daniel Murphy who had the big hits, a pair of two-run doubles. And after Dylan G threw seven solid innings, it was Jason Isringhausen who finished it up, his first save as a Mets since 1999 and doing it against his old team, the Cardinals. Then last night, we were in our perch on the Pepsi porch out in right field, and we had plenty of company. Carlos Beltran tied up the game with a two-run homer that nearly sailed into our laps. Later on, Josh Tolley tied up the game again in the eighth inning with a base hit, his second RBI of the game. Isringhausen was on the scene again, this time for two innings, and he got the win, and along the way struck out Pujols and Holiday and Berkman consecutively, and then Angel Pagan sent everybody home. This one literally almost ended up in our laps off the facing of the Pepsi porch. It was quite a night at City Field. The Mets' first walk-off home run of the season. And I, I think what gets lost in all that is the incredible performance by the Mets' bullpen each of the last two nights. Well, it was great last night. We saw a lot of the moves from Tony La Russa. Uh, Tim Burdak came in to face Skip Schumacher. He countered with Tony Cruz in a big situation with the go-ahead run on third base. Burdak got the ground ball. And then Pedro Beato had to come in and face Albert Pujols. Three pitches later, a pop-up to the first baseman, Lucas Duda. What a great job by both those relievers, the B&B &B boys. And Pedro Beato, because Parnell's pitched two days in a row, because Isringhausen's pitched two days in a row, he will be the closer if they have that situation today. Starting for the Mets today will be John Neese, and the Mets have not had a better starting pitcher in 2011. Well, he has been fantastic since May 20th. He is 8-3. and three. Those eight wins are tied with... Jair Jurgens, who's been talked about as a Cyan candidate, and also Giovanni Gallardo, Gallardo, who's the number one pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers. And he's going to be going against Jake Westbrook today, who is 80 and 79 in his career, seven wins this season. Like a lot of the right handers for the Cardinals, though, started quickly and has pitched poorly of late. Veteran sinker ball pitcher that the Cardinals got at the trading deadline last year. Mets trying to sweep the Cardinals out of Flushing before they start off on a 10 game road trip tomorrow. All the action. Coming your way on SNY.
On the Wise Snacks Ultimate Fan Experience sweepstakes, you can win a chance to throw out the first pitch at City Field. Enter at sny.tv slash wise. My Nathan's Famous Official Hot Dog of the New York Mets. We had one last night. Visit Nathan's Restaurant today. By Lexus. And by Atlantic City Food and Wine Festival, July 28th through the 31st. Visit acfoodandwine.com for details. Hitting the road, take the Mets with you this season. Subscribe to MLB.tv today to see every Mets game live or on demand on your computer and your favorite devices. Visit Mets.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv. Baseball everywhere. Here's your Dunkin' Donuts around the majors. Last night, the Angels snapped the Rangers' 12-game winning streak. Howie Kendrick, a two-run single and a six-run sixth, highlighting that Angels' 9-8 to win. Carlos Gonzalez had the game-winning hit for the Rockies in the bottom of the ninth as they outlasted the Braves 3-2. to And the Diamondbacks competing for the wild card and the West lead. Not only lost a game to Milwaukee, they lost their fine shortstop Stephen Drew for the year out with a broken ankle on a slide into home plate. In the same game, in fact, on the next play, the Brewers lost Carlos Gomez to a broken collarbone. He's going to be out a couple of months. Mets getting ready for their hot afternoon game against the Cardinals. First pitch coming up from City Field. Drinking water, hydrating, good thing to do on a hot day. <laughs> Got to keep yourself with plenty of liquids today. Here's your Ford starting lineup for the Cardinals. Late scratch was Ryan Terrio, who is going to start serving a two game suspension that he received for a confrontation with an umpire on Sunday. So Nick Punto bats lead off and Daniel Descalzo in at shortstop. Albert Pools didn't start yesterday. He's 0 for his last 10. That doesn't happen very often. Back in the lineup today. Against Jonathan Neese. Jonathan has been so outstanding coming off a terrific start against the Philadelphia Phillies. Since May 12th, he has eight wins, six or more strikeouts, 
successively in his last four starts, and he's been particularly good with runners in scoring position and two outs, 173 batting average against. And here's Alexis Mets defense behind Jonathan this afternoon on this steamy day. Jason Friday getting his fifth start of the season in left field. This is the 98th game for the Mets. Carlos Beltran in right field has played 87 of them. Paulino who caught that nice start against Philadelphia for Jonathan Eason his last start again behind the plate. So after watching the game from the opposite perspective yesterday you think it's going to be a little weird. Watching it from behind home plate again. Uh, it's going to be different, but I will tell you the shade here is welcomed on this no, kind of day. No question. It is hot out in the sun. Temperature is supposed to reach 95 today and 100 tomorrow in New York. Nick Punto switch hitter leads off and takes a first pitch strike, and the Mets are going to be escaping to Florida to cool off. It's not going to be nearly as hot in Miami as it's going to be here. Punto hitting at 272. And he runs up as though to bunt and takes high. Punto has missed a lot of time this year. He had a sports hernia at the start of the year. He's had a forearm and elbow problem. So he's only had 92 at bats this year. And leading off in a late kind of lineup scratch for Tony LaRusso. Punto is now 33. He began his career with the Phillies 10 years ago, but spent the last six years more prominently. With Minnesota, and he was really Ron Gardenhire's type of player. He was Ron Gardenhire. That's who he was 20 years later. And East falls behind him 3 and 1. Gardy was a shortstop in his day with the Mets and in Tidewater, and he was a scrappy player, the kind of guy that maxed out his efforts. John Jay in the on deck circle. And a fastball strike. By the way, we're being told now that Terrio's suspension was reduced to one game. That was the deal. If he took it today, they would reduce it from two to one. So he opted to do that, and that's why he was scratched late. And Putto down on strikes. Good fastball by Nice to start the afternoon with a strikeout. Well, why has Jonathan been so successful? He's throwing strikes. He's getting more strikeouts, swing and misses, but also because he is using all four of his pitches, and that includes that cutter and changeup. So one out and nobody on. Now John Jay, the center fielder. Jay one for five in this series. Has been getting more and more playing time in center field and even starting against the lefty today. His fellow left-hand hitter, Colby Rasmus, the regular center fielder, has seen his playing time diminish. Rasmus Rasmus started last night. You know Gary only because Jerry Davis the home plate umpire was an umpire in my day. You would go into this game if you were a starting pitcher and know that you had to get a little more contact. Jerry has more of a, a smallish strike zone always has his entire career. Even on a hot day and a noontime start. Well maybe that <laughs> might be a factor. <laughs> Jay hits one the other way toward the left field corner and that's going to fall for a base hit. Friday chases it in the corner. And Jay pulls in at second base with a one out double. Tenth double of the year for John Jay. You know, we've seen this with John Jay, the high leg kick. And it's not like he goes the other way. That's kind of a late swing, and that ball just peels off the end of his bat down that left field line and out of the reach of Jason Friday. Friday getting the start in left field with Jason Bay on the sidelines with a little tight hamstring. So now Albert Pujols with that with the runner in scoring position. Pujols does not look good in this series. 0 for 6 and going back to Sunday he's 0 for his last 10. Didn't start yesterday but came off the bench in a big spot in the seventh inning and Pedro Beato got him to pop up. Later Jason Isringhausen struck him out in the ninth. And there's a strike from Nice on the outside. Here's Bay. The, the injury to Bay is not considered to be serious but especially with the short turnaround day game after a night game Terry Collins was not going to chance it with him. Jason said he first started feeling that hamstring. Back in the Philadelphia series, he said at first it was actually a hip issue, and then to compensate, he had a little problem with the hamstring. He tweaked it trying to avoid Ryan Howard at first, right, Gary? A lot to avoid. <laughs> you're not with Ryan Howard, you're amongst him. <laughs> oh. Well, we have a problem. A panel has fallen out of the outfield fence. Ooh. And Angel Pagan is going to go out and see if he can play maintenance man. Newer version of the knot hole game. Let's see how he does here. Velcroed in. Very nice job. Good job. 
Just to fix it. Now that's a utility man. <laughs> You know, pull out you were saying Gary 0 for 10 in this series, but is he the proverbial bear that you don't want to wake up? Nice ahead of a moment too takes a look at second. I was watching last night when we had a close up of Albert from the center field camera, and his sneer seemed to be a little less <laughs> sneerish than usual. See, he's not quite didn't quite have that menacing look that he normally has now I, I may be reading too much into it but normally when he looks out at the pitcher he looks almost evil yeah it's like bring it on I'm ready to go but you're right he's a little lost right now but that could change for great hitters with one swing of the bat Nice and Polino having trouble again together. John pitched seven brilliant innings against the Phillies his last time out, allowed just one earned run over seven innings. Mets were hitting that day and routed the Phillies 11 to two. You know that the really traced the evolution of Nice as a pitcher, along with maybe RA in some situations. Nice shakes off the catcher as much as any starting pitcher for the Mets this season. Pelfrey usually pretty rote goes with what's called. Dylan G the same. So is that assertiveness necessarily a good thing? Great thing. Ruholz hits one foul down the right side. That's, I know how to get people out. I know what the best pitch is, and this is what I need. That's great stuff. And at that point, does it become the catcher's responsibility to try and get in his head to be able to think with him? Get on page, brother. Come on. You know, figure it out. Here's the one-two, and the breaking ball in the dirt. Two and two. He's his third career start against the Cardinals. He's dominated them in his first two outings. 1.17 ERA in those two starts against St. Louis. And Pujols dribbles and foul. The Cardinals now are the highest scoring team in the National League. And they lost last night, but they scored five runs. They now have the same number of runs as the Cincinnati Reds, having played one fewer game. So Tony LaRusso's problem has not been his offense; it has been his pitching. Once he gets past his first two starters, Carpenter and Garcia, and we've seen that already in this series. Now the two-two from Nice, and Pujols fouls it at the plate on the cutter that got way in on him. But you know that's another one of those good hitter things. Bad hitters strike out on that. Pitch. That's right. During the weekday games, my favorite. Well, these noon starts are great in yeah. the summertime with all the camp kids here. And Pujols hits it toward the left field line, but foul. Just the groupings of kids and the, the colorful shirts. You get little patches yes. here, red. Oh, that's yellow. right. They have their colors in each camp, uh -huh. right? I have to have a talk to my parents. How come I wasn't sent to camp? I think that's uh, one of the many problems I'm suffering <laughs> with at old age. <laughs> Here's the ninth pitch to Pujols, and he hits one to deep left field. Back goes Pratty for a look, but that ball is way out of here. Off the facing of the second deck. Now Pujols able to extend the at bat and his first hit of the series is a two run homer his 21st of the year to put the Cardinals up to nothing. You can only keep him down for so long. Well when you play good teams and they've lost a couple games usually their best players have the answer and say boys get on my shoulders. Uh, we're not going to lose three in a row today. It'll be interesting to see if the Mets can handle pools all day today. Now, Nice got ahead of him 0 2. Pools wound up seeing nine pitches in the at bat and waited for a cutter in the middle of the plate that he could hit out of the park. He's trying to throw a cutter on the outside part. It hits middle, middle, and up. And we've seen that Albert's been struggling with the real good fastball. That cutter probably five miles an hour less. Right into his happy zone. 
Now Matt Holiday has really swung the bat well. Last night had a terrific game. Going three for four, a couple of RBIs. He takes care of him though on three pitches. His second strike out of the inning. Set him up with the curve, blew him away with the fastball. Fastball up, same thing that he did to Nick Punto on the 3 2 count. Jonathan Neese has been very good at not giving up home runs. That's his first since June of 25th against the Rangers. Only the 10th home run he's allowed this year in 20 starts. Now Lance Berkman, the National League's leading home run hitter. And he pops one foul, first base side. Duda should have room right near the railing to grab it, and that ends the inning. But Pools puts a charge in one off the facing of the second deck to start Nice's afternoon poorly. Jupiter is Mars. Jose Reyes leads off against Jake Westbrook in the bottom of the first and takes up and away for ball one. Reyes took a rare 0 for last night, 0 for 5, and he hit the ball in the air four times, which is never a good idea for Jose, who's been hitting line drives all year. 126 hits to lead the National League, a 350 batting average to lead the majors. And he hits one sharply, but right at freeze, playing it on the grass for the first down. I think we've all been impressed by freeze, huh, Gary? Here's your Geico Mets starting lineup. Jason Priney gets the start in left with Bay suffering the hamstring. Pagan coming off his first ever walk off home run. As the Mets came from four runs down last night, they'll have to come from behind today against Westbrook. Uh, Jake Westbrook, it's interesting. Westbrook, the third right hander to go against the Mets, all very similar. Sinker, slurve, change up pitchers in Loesch, McClellan last night, and now Westbrook today. Justin Turner, three for 10 in this series, hitting a 268 for the year. Carlos Beltran on deck. And with the Mets set to embark on a 10 day road trip that will take them through the trading deadline, it is certainly a possibility that Beltron is about to play his last home game at City Field. That's right. The next home game is August 1st, right? Wow. Taken outside, 3 and 1. Met saw Westbrook last year with the Indians before he was traded to the Cardinals at the deadline. And look at the Cardinal defense. Of course, like Cardinal defense, two time gold glove winner, 2006 2010. And Molina behind the plate, three in a row. Hit hard, but right at Pujols for the second out. So 
So Turner is retired two away, and Beltron will come to the plate. He doesn't get any kind of special round of applause. He has been raging hot. He's had a great series here so far against the Cardinals. Three for three on Tuesday night. A two run homer last night that tied up the game. 15 homers, 61 RBIs. Has more extra base hits than anybody in the National League. And while we have seen the don't trade Reyes signs all around City Field for the last couple of months. I haven't seen anything like that regarding Beltron. The only thing we had last night, I looked to your left when we were up in the Pepsi porch and someone had Carlos thanks to the memory. So, so that's kind of the opposite. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of a resign to his fate. Strength three called, Beltron down looking. So Westbrook handed the lead in the first inning, gets the Mets one, two, three. Two nothing cards after one. Brooklyn Burger, the premium steakhouse burger, and the official burger of the New York Mets. Be sure to visit Keith's Grill at City Field, located on the field level behind Section 132, to enjoy Keith Hernandez's favorite Brooklyn Burger. Second inning, David Freeze leads off against John Neese. Freeze one for eight in this series and just one for his last 17. And he skies one out to center field. Angel Pagan back a few strides. And there to grab it, one away. Well, Gary, you can notice by that kind of fly ball to center field. We saw it at Pepsi Porch last night where it hits kind of a wall on a very humid day like today. We might see some balls uh, carrying. Don't have quite that breeze coming from between the left field stands and the scoreboard that was knocking balls down last night. Here's Yadier Molina who had last night off. His replacement, Gerald Laird, had a very important hit for the Cardinals. A bunt single that put them briefly in front of the eighth inning. Mr. Met always entertaining. Paul Seaver. There's the strike and it's one and one to Molina. Molina hitless in his last 13 at bats, hitting a 270 for the year. Two balls and a strike. Marking to Gary in between innings to you folks at home that Yadier Molina, the first three hitters for the Mets, did not acknowledge them at all. Most of the time, when hitters come up at the beginning of the game, they'll you know, tap the shin guard of the catcher, say, How you doing, buddy? 
boy, it's hot out here. One of those kind of things. And Molina just was not hearing it. So it's very interesting that with pool holds with the big home run and Molina with all business today that uh, a little bad blood here on this third game of the series. Well, also Pujols kind of got in Polino's face when he crossed the plate after the home run. Not sure what he said or how it was meant, but it was a little unusual. And it makes you wonder, you know, last night Pagan kind of posed when he hit his game winning home run. And so it might be instructive to see what happens yeah. when Angel comes to bat at the bottom of the inning. It's, uh, you know, Cardinals are angry. They've lost a couple here. Uh, they come out all business today. 2-2 to Molina, and he goes down swinging. East with the fastball gets Molina. His third strikeout, two out of the second. And this is the thing I, I had noticed when Pujols crossed the plate, and I was letting you know, Gary, in our truck, watching, you know, Albert always points to the sky after he hits a home run when he crossed the plate. But watch what he does after. He is saying something to Paulino right there, and it wasn't how do you do. Out the McNeil. <laughs> Fastball strike to Descalzo, nothing and one. Descalzo, two for five in the series, late addition of the lineup when Terry was scratched, serving a suspension today, and the curveball from Neeson for a strike, 0 and 2. Descalzo, a guy who had never played shortstop, not in college, not in the minors, but has been playing a little bit of shortstop lately for the Cardinals. And again tonight, hits one past the mound. Reyes flashing to his left. Has plenty of time to throw out to Scalzo to end the inning. So Nice bounces back with a 1 2 3 inning. Mets come to bat in the bottom of the second. 2 0 St. Louis. Daniel Murphy leads off the bottom of the second for New York. Mets down 2 0 after Albert Pujols, first inning two run homer. Murphy, two for 10 in this series, had the big two run double in the game on Tuesday night. Angel Pagan on deck, and then Lucas Duda here in the bottom of the second. Jake Westbrook got the side in order in the first, and ball one to Murphy. Murph, 10th in the National League in batting, hitting a 308 start in the day. And Westbrook falls behind 2 0. Murphy's had himself a wonderful stretch over the last two months. Tomorrow, David Wright comes back from the disabled list. He'll rejoin the Mets in Miami. As Murphy hits one straight away to center, and Jay is there. One away, which means that Murphy's going to be playing mostly first base. Now, Angel Pagan, this is how the game ended last night. Well, fastball in the middle of the plate, and uh, 
started that trot a little late after he signaled to the bench. Exciting time, exciting moment. First time that Angel has ever ended a game with a walk off home run. Again, no back and forth between Pagan and Molina. And those guys are friends. Interesting to me. And Westbrook comes inside, not too far in, for ball one. I mean, Molina and Pagan have known each other for years. Here's a bouncing ball right at the second baseman Punto, and Pagan retired two out. And the reason I bring that up uh, when you think about it, this is last night's game. The home run, the throwing to the bat. We've seen David Ortiz get in some trouble for the same kind of kind of histrionics, and you know it's the the end of the game, and you want to, you know, it's a. Highlight moment and all those kind of things, but uh, remember Molina had a big flare up with Brandon Phillips of the Cincinnati mm -hmm. Reds because Brandon Phillips tried to talk to him in his first at bat after Brandon Phillips had showed this shown the same kind of uh, histrionic. So well, what Phillips did was he tried to kind of make nice yeah. and tap him on the shin guards, say no hard feelings, and Molina's reaction was lots of hard feelings, and they really got into it. Duda grounds out to Pujols, so six up and six down for Westbrook. To start the afternoon, and we go to the third. Ralph Kiner will join us in the third. Two nothing, card. One of their favorite moments for the past five decades. Rolf Kiner, 50 amazing years tonight at 7 p.m. only on SNY. And our preview today is that we have Ralph here in the booth for <laughs> this afternoon game. Well, that seems like only yesterday. And you know what a lousy <laughs> day that was. <laughs> 50 years, Ralph. Then that's just the Mets part of your career. Now, 50 years is a long time. I never expected to be Anymore, I'd signed five years in a row as a as a announcer for the Mets with a single year contract. So I had never had a long term contract until my sixth year in the major leagues as a broadcaster. Of course, I started with the White Sox. I was over there on radio with uh, Bob Elson, who's a Hall of Fame broadcaster. He strikes out Westbrook to start the third. His fourth strikeout. So uh, when your contracts those first five years that keep you hungry is that was that the, the goal of management. You know, at that time? I, well you know I, I think more than anything else it was a, it, it was common very common in fact. Uh, uh, Walter Ralston with the Dodgers had I think 17 consecutive one year contracts. First Dodger with uh, O'Malley uh, to sign a multi year contract was Tommy Lasorda. So he, he signed a two year contract. So hungry like. To 
keep you inspired or hungry like you weren't eating that well in those days? Yeah, I, I, I don't know what they pay me. I couldn't eat very well. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I imagine Scully probably had multiple year deals. Oh, yeah. Well, that was after. <laughs> after uh, Scully is a much longer time uh, announcing than I have. I, he started with Brooklyn and Brooklyn. Yeah, but you started in the big leagues before he did. Right. Oh, yeah, right. yeah it's first, a ball player. Yeah, his yeah. first year was 1950. And yeah, my first year was 1946. Nick Quinto pokes one foul. Let's just say that you both had long and exemplary careers. Well, you know, I got in B because I did in the same city. He moved to, uh, from right. uh, Evansfield in Brooklyn to Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. Quinto goes down on strikes and he's rolling up the strikeouts early. He struck out five of the first ten batters. Quinto, I've always thought, is a better left-handed hitter. This will sink her away. Another pitch that we haven't, that we're starting to see from Jonathan East for the strikeout. So now John Jay, who doubled to the left field corner and scored in front of Pujols' home run in the first inning. So have you seen this uh, special that's going to be here tonight, Ralph? No, I haven't. I, uh, they said they were going to deliver it to me this morning, but I was uh, on my way to City Field uh, early this morning. It's, it's, you an, were. it's an early game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 12 o'clock game. We the played a 10 o'clock game in San Francisco one time. Most of the guys weren't even up at <laughs> They're not. <laughs> they not have been hit by them. <laughs> some, some. Lindsay and Bob had done a lot of television in their past careers, and so I looked forward to it. And as it turned out, they were the two uh, best influences on my career as a broadcaster. It's one of the scenes from tonight's special, Ralph Connor, 50 Amazing Years. And I've seen that photo before as Ron, Ronnie Polino grounds one on the right side. That was the quintessential dressed for the 70s look that you guys had. This quote that Lindsay has on right now is in the Hall of Fame and I'll be in the Hall of Fame for the ceremony on Sunday when they have that this year going up after the ball game tonight. What are you uh, talking about the 70s? Keith has all three of those quotes. <laughs> are you kidding? But he's not colorblind. <laughs> Here's Jason Pryde getting the start in left field today with Jason Bay. Sitting out with a slight hamstring injury. Pride he played a lot early in the year when Angel Pagan was hurt, but this is his first start in July. Ball and a strike to Jason. Well, you were saying in that clip that um, that Lindsay and Bob had more broadcasting experience than you did, but with the three of you doing all the radio and television for the first what 17 years 17 years yes you got a lot of experience in a hurry <laughs> very much so no question about it 
Punto in on the backhand and throws out Friday two away. You know the one thing that really did help me when I worked for the White Sox I did radio. And I'd have to come in in the afternoon when the White Sox were playing the night game and do a recreated game. So I had to recreate the game off a of ticker tape. And I learned to do whatever I want. In other words, you could make a line drive, you could make it a blue pit or a broken bat head or do anything you want with that as a single. And that was a real way to learn how to uh, broadcast baseball. Mm -hmm. And that was the way they used to do all the road games in the old days of radio broadcasting. Started by the Cincinnati Reds and Red Barber in Cincinnati. Then he came to Brooklyn and did the games in Brooklyn, of course. And Brooklyn and the Yankees wouldn't do radio. They had a deal where they would not broadcast games uh, in the Yankees anymore in uh, Evans Field. Ralph, when you changed back and forth, radio, TV, TV to radio, how did you not repeat something that had already been talked about. Let's I'm see. sure we did because oh, it's very, <laughs> very, you know when you do that because I mainly two guys would work on TV and one would work on radio. That was a basic deal that we sort of went through but at one time when Lindsay was doing Notre Dame football he would go to Notre Dame or wherever the Notre Dame team was playing and then Bob and I would have to do TV and, and radio and we'd switch off. And we pass each other in the hallway going by over the chains to the other event. After three, it's two nothing Cardinals. Let's go to the Verizon Studios for an update from Matt Cerrone of Mets Blog, presented by Verizon. On SNY are available in HD presented by IOTV, and you can listen to every Mets game on Sports Radio 66 WFAN. Mets are in Florida to start a weekend series, start of a 10 game road trip tomorrow night. And David Wright will be back with the Mets. He's completed his rehab assignment. He only hit about 900 down in the minor leagues getting ready, but it's good to have David back after missing more than two months with a fracture in his back. Albert Pujols, who missed only two weeks with a fractured wrist, grounds one to shortstop. And deep on the backhand, Reyes makes the play one pitch and one out. So, Nice has now retired nine in a row since Pujols' home run in the first. I'll say one thing about uh, Reyes. He certainly has made some outstanding plays. That was not an easy play. They had the backhand to short up and made a good throw over the first base. He is defensively. A real all-star. The plays he made in the first game of this series on the line shot from Jay that was an infield hit, and then Parnell got Pujols to dribble one over the bag and turned a double player. It's as good as it gets. 
That play was that written up as a great play. I thought it was routine. Yeah. Well, routine for him. Yes. Well, the first play wasn't routine. The one he dove in the hole. Oh, that was saved, a great play. Saved a run yeah. on that. I'm not talking about the double yeah. play. When you have the runner bearing down on you and you're standing on that bag and there's no way to rush the ball to you, you have to wait for it. That's you see a lot of uh, infielders lose control of that ball, or at least not turn to double play. He can get up faster from the ground or, right. as anyone I ever saw. And that was, of course, you know, the second game with the second game after he came back from the hamstring. Right. So, you know, you had some concern at that point about his mobility and his ability to test that hamstring, but he's, he's like Gumby sometimes. <laughs> two and two to Matt Holiday, who struck out his first time up, and he gets him again. That's six strikeouts for John Neese over the first three and two thirds. He's just too shy of his career high. Uh, these day games after night games, you see some funny swings even from the best hitters. How about the uh, the pitching matchup between Kershaw and Lincecum yesterday? No one had a chance. Only Navarro with the one swing, one home run into the McCovey Cove, and that was it. Great pitching there. Wow. One thing about day games, though. I just found out that could have hit 500. <laughs> <laughs> the middle and Berkman's got a hit. I mean, uh, they, they say that you have blue eyes, you can't see the ball in day games, and I have blue eyes. If I had brown eyes, I would have painted them brown, and I could see, and I would have hit more home runs. <laughs> well, brown contacts or something. Are they? Well, I didn't have them. You would have hit 800 home runs oh, if you I, played at night. It's a sh <laughs> shame. No, daytime. <laughs> That's right. It's a shame things didn't work out for you, Ralph. Huh? It's a shame didn't, things didn't work out for you. And <laughs> though, there's no other Hall of Fame. You can't go any higher. <laughs> David Freeze takes a curveball for a strike. You know, you guys are talking about Reyes with all the NFL nonsense going on right now. It'd be interesting to see Reyes through a combine workout for the defensive backs or wide receivers. How he'd fare in the standing. Uh, High jump and all those different things that they do. He would do exceptionally oh. well, but he might not last too long. <laughs> That's, no, I'm not talking about. Don't put the pads on. Yeah. But I'm talking about the 40-yard dash, uh, the standing, and, and seeing how far you can touch, jumping straight up, the uh, diagonal runs that they do. You know, though, the Mets did some of those a couple of years ago. Berkman runs and it's hit down the right field side and slicing foul. Talked about a freeze. And in all those drills, Reyes did great. But Pagan did better. Well, Pagan's got the strength. He won everything. Pagan did. Pagan's yeah. got a little more strength than Reyes. I'm saying one thing about Benson Bergman. He's one heck of a hitter out. This guy is one of the great switch hitters of all time, and he gets no recognition at all. Well, he played in the shadow of Bagwell and Biggio That's in right. Houston for so long. Well, the, uh, the other real good pitch uh, switch hitter is is uh, Chipper Jones, but uh, Bergman has all. He's a home run hitter. And of course, uh, uh, Chipper's a home run hitter. He's going to be around 400, I guess, in total runs. But Bergman's about 350. Nice makes the nice snag and throws out Freeze to end the inning. So Nice on a roll. Now the Mets need to get him some offense. Top of the order coming up against Westbrook in the bottom of the fourth.
Game coverage of today's Mets Cardinals series finale with all the latest reactions, in depth discussion, and exclusive interviews on Daily News Live presented by City, part of the New York Sports Local today at 5, only on SNY. Jose Reyes leads off the fourth inning. Jake Westbrook going perfectly through the Mets over the first three. Reyes grounded out to lead off the first. And he fouls this one away, one and one. It'll be Reyes, Turner, and Beltron. For the Mets in the fourth. Well, um, so we'll get the run scored numbers in the National League. Ray is second behind Ricky Weeks. Tags this one to center field. Back goes Jay to the warning track. He can't get it. And Reyes is flying to second. Taking the turn and headed for third. And Reyes is in with his 16th triple of the year. You're playing in the outfield today. The ball's not going to come back to you like it usually does. This ball continued to carry and beat John Jay. It usually plays a pretty shallow center field. And Reyes, once that ball's over the head of Jay, he reads it, turns it on around second. And easy triple for Jose. Well, during his run, running drills here before his rehab assignment, and then during his game in Brooklyn on Monday, he did not. Try to leg out a triple. He said he was going to save it for when it counted. Well, it just counted. That's a ball that at night is caught by Jay in the daytime today, 100 degrees, carried over his head. Infield back for Turner, who takes ball one. But the other thing, Ronnie, is I think the Cardinals center field play in this series with both Jay and Rasmus has been a little subpar. I, I agree. I think uh, Jay likes to play a very shallow center field, which is fine if you can go get him. Well, the one thing it doesn't know is physics, because then when the, when it's hot like this, the ball will carry yeah. because it's light air that goes, and the uh, ball will go in the light air farther than it does in the heavy air that's uh, not uh, on a hot day. Reyes triple, the Mets first hit off Westbrook. So now you have to look at the home runs of Babe Ruth, hit. <laughs> and he played all day games. Turner gets the run in with the grounder to short. Reyes comes in to score his 68th run of the season, and it cuts the Cardinal lead to two to one. It's 37 runs batted in for Justin Turner. So a Reyes run. You know he's got 16 triples now. That's more than seven National League teams, and it's only five away now from the Mets' club record of 21, set by Lance Johnson back in '96. It's Carlos Beltran, and he takes ball one. Well, we were looking up the numbers, Ralph, on your home runs in day games versus night games, and your home run ratio is almost exactly the same. So maybe you've had blue eyes at night and brown eyes during the day. <laughs> yeah, I had the uh, contact. In the daytime, you played 1,017 games at 257 home runs, about one every four games. At night, 455 games, 112 home runs, about one every four games. So maybe it's only a recent phenomenon that blue eyed players have trouble in the daytime. <laughs> yeah, I was second to Babe Ruth in uh, average home runs, percentage of home runs per times at bat. I was at 14.1 uh, at bats. And then McGuire was. Well, actually, Kellerbo was third. Of course, all those records are gone because right. of steroids. It but changed the whole record book. And it's ball four, and Beltron's on with the walk, so the Mets have the tying run aboard. You know, basically, I don't want to take anything away from McGuire because his first year in the major leagues, he led the league in home runs of 48. 49. Okay, 49. The rookie record, right? Yeah. But the old record was by Wally Berger, who was 38 home runs by a rookie. And that stood up for years and years and years. Well, here's Murphy with Beltron at first and one out. And Daniel takes it wide for ball one. So you're assuming that he was clean his rookie year? I, so, absolutely, yeah. Well, I think so. There's not quite some bad. See, my problem with all of that is I can't assume anybody was ever clean during the steroid. Well, I think Conseco, I, I think you have to believe Conseco. He's the one that got him started. Played for Oakland together, the two of them. Double play ball right at Descalzo. And the turn by Punto for the 6 4 3 double play. But the Mets get themselves a run in familiar fashion. 
Jose Reyes in one deep to left center beyond the reach of Jay for a three base hit. His 16th triple leads to the first men run and it's two to one St. Louis after four. In the first, Nice has retired 11 of 12 since then. Reyes' triple brought the Mets their first run in the fourth. And so Nice now down by one, facing the lower third of the Cardinal order. And Yadier Molina pokes one to the right side. Nice short hop pickup by Turner. One pitch and one out for Nice in the fifth. The uh, all time triple hitter is held by, this is career wise, was held by Wahoo Sam Crawford. Came from Wahoo. I don't know what state. Is it Illinois? I don't know. Some place where they had. Wahoo's kind of fish, isn't it? Well, or it could be some Native American reference. Yes, of course. Daniel Descalzo takes a strike. He so. had something like 300 of the triples, and that's a, that's a long way to go for anybody that's going to try and break that record. Pulled down the right field line by Descalzo, and he's got himself an extra base hit. So Descalzo, a late addition to the lineup, into the eighth spot, replacing Ryan Terrio, picks up his 17th double of the year. The fourth hit off John Neese. Right here, he was not in the starting lineup, and he comes through with a hard line drive down the right field side and uh, a two base hit. So it's almost the axiom that when you're not in the starting lineup and you finally get in, you're going to be have a good day. Sometimes that not having to worry about it overnight and come to the ballpark and and they had already had the lineup with Terrio in there and then change it what 15 minutes before the game, Gary? If that. And then say, hey, take those soft shoes off, put the spikes on, ready to go. No must, no fuss. <laughs> That's Look at that 18 batters 15 first pitch strikes for John Neese. Two and one to Westbrook who struck out his first time up. You know Gary uh, the when they played the baseball games in St. Louis when they had the artificial turf in the summertime it holds the heat very well the temperature of the artificial turf was one hundred and sixty degrees. That's how hot the artificial turf was. Guys would come in, take their shoes off, and put them in the ice, ice cold bucket. That's right. Now you played on that, Ronnie. Was it really? Yeah, it, I, I played when it was 145 in St. Louis as the Jonathan Neese walks the pitcher, Cardinal Sin, his first walk of the game. But what I used to do, uh, Ralph, our spikes were probably a little different than yours. We didn't have the 
the, the leather ones uh, with the leather bottoms is that we were able to put, we had the plastic bottoms, you'd put your whole foot and ankle, everything, right into the cold bath water, uh, the cold ice water. That's right, yeah. Well, Casey's tangled at it that way because the... Uh, Punto hits it down to Duda, steadies himself, and he hits the runner Westbrook, and that's going to bring in a run as Descalza comes in to score. Now Duda, fielding the sharp grounder, got his feet, but then he struck Westbrook with the throw, and that cost the Mets a run. Well, he makes a nice play here, but the throw has got to be on the outside of the bag to Jose's left. That's where the throw has to be. He tried to go on the other side. If you do that, it at some point, it's got to cross the runner, and he got unfortunate to hit the left shoulder of Jake Westbrook. That throw always has to be on the outfield side, not the infield side well, you of can second go, base. You can go on the infield side, but you have to go in about three yeah. steps and make that angle where you don't hit the runner, and he didn't do that. But he's not a first baseman. He's playing out of position. It's just another reason why left-handers have an advantage at first base. You're throwing that down from the third base side. That's right. They do. But you also, if you're not sure of that throw, get yourself an out at first base. Two outs. Left-hander facing a left-hander. So now it's three to one, St. Louis. John Jay, the batter, slices one foul, and it's 0 2. Jay doubled and scored back in the first inning, flat out in the third, 1 for 2. And you got Albert Pujol standing on deck. So, barring a double play, Pujols is going to have an RBI chance. But it goes back to that walk to the pitcher that set up the whole inning. Toward the middle of the diamond, Jay hits the bag, and it takes a ricochet into center field. That'll bring Westbrook home. On to third goes Punto. John Jay with an RBI single. And now the throw goes to an unoccupied first base. And in the score comes Punto. And two runs score on the play. Angel Pagan saw the hitter Jay come around first base. Tried to throw behind him. But there was no Met covering first to throw to. Well, of course there's not going to be a Met to throw to. Because dude has got to come in and be the cutoff guy. There's no one going to be at first base. He's going to be cutting off. The I guess he thought Dave McKay was the first baseman. Exactly. That's what happened. Well, the cardinal rule, I shouldn't say cardinal rule, <laughs> the rule is that uh, you don't throw behind the runner. And very seldom do you ever get the man. And it quite often happens just like this. It would have been interesting to see if Dave McKay had been on the play of, uh, field of play because he was only about three feet away. If there would have been some kind of rule. You got the runners on the bases. Here's Jay's ball that bets off the bag. And there's where Duda is supposed to be. That's the cutoff man. That's his position. But you see McKay almost standing on first base. Buholz lifts one out to center. Pagan has this one lined up. Jay tagging at second, but he's not going to try for third as Pagan gets it in to the cutoff man, Reyes, and that's the second out. Well, the thing about it is that Pagan pump faked on the throw. And I thought at that point he had realized that. There was nobody covering first, and then it's almost like he had a brain cramp and he threw the ball anyway. See him fake it once? Well, he was faking the second base and then figured once Jay was going back to first, he had that play in a rundown, although there was no one there. Mm. And so the Mets throwing the, the ball around here in the fifth inning. And of course, that's an error in that play. Jay gets an RBI single, an error scores the second run. So errors by Duda and Pagan here in the fifth inning have. Helped the Cardinals to a couple of runs. And they now lead it five to one. Jay at second with two out. Holiday has struck out his first two at bats and he's behind 0 and 2 here. And while Nice can certainly hang some blame on his defense, you go back to the walk yes. of the pitcher Westbrook. Can't do that. You take that away and the whole inning comes down differently. DJ Carrasco up in the bullpen. Even those extra outs on errors is almost a death wish. Now the 0 2 to Holiday, and he comes inside with the cutter, 1 and 2. Well, with the errors in the walk, Ralph, you can almost look at that's this a, as a six out inning. That's right, yeah, it's a, you can't do that. And that's what uh, ends up uh, making you uh, a team that does not win. Oh, 
Holiday dribbles one, and that'll go foul. I know he struck out twice today, Ralph, but Matt Holiday is a guy who really impresses me. Tremendous combination of average and power. A lot of people shied away from him because he played in Colorado, and uh, you know the stats in Colorado because it's a mile high there. Are always uh, pumped up pretty well, but he certainly came in and took over and did as well in uh, in a regular altitude uh, baseball field. Now maybe I'm off, but when I look at him, you know who he reminds me of as a hitter, Mike Piazza. He's got that same kind of, you know, the bat stays in the zone a long time. He's able to hit line drives. Has terrific power. It seems like he dictates the at bats, not the pitcher, which Mike always did. Yes, yeah, so certainly a great hitter as far as his time with the Dodgers and the Mets. And people forget when he was the Dodgers, Mike had 361 years. Right. And they almost couldn't he couldn't get signed, mm -hmm. and uh, Lasorda gave him a chance to play. He said, I want to sign this guy. He's the last guy taken. And uh, we'll find a place for him to play. That was the problem. He didn't really have a position. They made him a catcher, which is the hardest one in the world to learn. Nepotism sometimes works. Yeah, so he's a as well, he's a godfather. <laughs> Eighth pitch of the bat, and Holiday keeps it going. You know, the thing about Holiday, though, Ralph, I think what happened to him is that once he got shipped out of Colorado and went to Oakland, he had a miserable time of it for about half the season. Until he was sent to, uh, to St. Louis, and I think that's when people really shied away because his first time out of Colorado was a struggle. But probably was a struggle because he knew he was going through that Piazza kind of history, going to be with three different teams within the course of a year. Yeah, Piazza went from the Dodgers to Miami and then to the New York Mets. Holiday strikes out for the third time. That's seven strikeouts for Nice, but a three-run inning for the Cardinals helped out by Met mistakes. Duda with a throwing error. Then the ball off the second base bag off Jay's bat and Pagan makes it worse throwing to an unoccupied base. content including up to the minute sports news and original video plus weekly interviews with Keith Hernandez like us at facebook.com slash SNY today excuse me yeah I, my eyebrows raised when I read that too Keith's doing weekly interviews 
Come on, say it. I can. I know what's going through your mind. I think you better let that that be unsaid. (laughs) Jake Westbrook now with a 5 1 lead. He's given up only one hit through the first four innings. A triple to Reyes in the fourth. Westbrook with a 5.78 ERA over his last six starts, but four runs to the good today. Angel Pagan leads off in the home fifth, and again, Westbrook starts him off inside. That's a pretty good hustle by Westbrook on that play that Duda made the error on. See a lot of pitchers uh, who don't uh, act like an athlete out there, and Jake did. And he also then scampered home from second on that base hit off the second base bag without a problem at all. Well, Westbrook started out as a Rockies draft choice and then was traded a couple of times. Montreal to the Yankees. His major league debut was with the Yankees and he went from there to Cleveland. So he had never played in the National League before last year when the Cardinals got him at the trading deadline. Bouncing ball, Punto to his right. So you're talking about a guy who had not spent a lot of time doing, you know, hitting and running type activities. Cardinals got him last year. They gave him a two year, $18 million contract extension. Here's Duda, who grounded out to first base his first time. But with, you know, Westbrook struggling the way he has, and Lotion McClellan, who we saw earlier in the series, there's no question that the Cardinals are in the market for starting pitching as we approach the trading deadline 10 days away. When he was with the Yankees, he was traded to I mean, acquired by the New York Yankees when he was with Montreal when Munch, uh, New York shipped off Hideki Arabu, who had become the fat toad. toad. <laughs> <laughs> In the words of George Steinbrenner, I left out a word there. That's right. I don't know, can you say pussy on TV? You just did. I guess so. One two to Duda in tight two and two. The Cardinals start the day just two games out of first place in the National League Central. Milwaukee has the lead for today, but the Pittsburgh Pirates are sitting a half game out of first place. And Ralph, given your long term affiliation with the Pirates, I I know that you've got to feel pretty good about that. I know a lot of people in baseball are really rooting for Pittsburgh this year. Well, Pittsburgh has finished below 500 for 18 consecutive years. And uh, they asked me one time uh, when the Mets picked me up as a broadcaster, asked me uh, why they took me. And I said, well, they must have seen my record and I have losing experience. <laughs> Dude with an opposite field hit, just the Mets' second hit of the game. You know, as big as he is, he hits a lot of balls off the middle part of the bat toward left field. And I know Keith loves to see. People that all around the park, but this would be a home run hitter, and he hit a lot of home runs in college at USC. But he doesn't get the advantage of all that strength and all that weight. Well, he hit a lot of home runs in Buffalo before the Mets called him up this year. Of course, it is Triple A ball, and it's a little bit different in the major leagues. This. This batter right here is a guy that gets a. You said it yesterday. He gets a lot of blue pits. I've never saw a guy as big as he is, and he drops in there his broken bat jobs and everything else. Double play ball right at Descalzo, and an easy turn for Punto to end the inning. Second straight inning, the Cardinals have turned a 6-4-3 double play. Taylor made. After five at City Field, five to one St. Louis.
only players in Major League history with a 300 plus average and 30 plus home runs in seven or more straight seasons. Well, I know one of those guys is here today. Did it say how many there were? Four. Four? Four. Four. Okay. Let's see if we can figure out the other three. You got one down. I think we mentioned another one of them. We had a today. we had a different question the other day too that includes I think one or two of those uh, mm. guys in that. Berkman had a base hit to center his last time up. Berkman's always been a much better left hand hitter than right and this year has been no different. You know talking about batting senses I think one of them I'm guessing I don't really know. Had one of the most unusual batting senses I've ever seen in baseball. Nobody has ever done this. Except him. It's a guy who was batted and he moved his front foot or his foot facing the pitcher back toward the catcher as he swung in the ball. And he says you don't swing up at the ball. <laughs> I got one guy on my side. Bobby Valentine says you absolutely do. Swing up on the ball. He's got some authority. I mean, he's been a manager a long time. Free is retired on the liner to Turner for the second out. Let's check in with Chris Carlin. He's standing by with the New York State Smokers quit line game break. Wait a second. The Padres scored three in the first again today. <laughs> well, they scored 13 runs in the first two innings yesterday. All of a sudden, they're an offensive juggernaut. You know, you were saying you're going to Florida to cool down a little. That's the only problem you have in Florida. Rain is the rain. Yeah. Well, they got a rain delay there in the second inning, and Murphy with a nice snag of the liner off the bat of Molina. So a couple of line drive outs in the inning, and John Neese sets the Cardinals down one, two, three. Earth with the extension. To achieve this year, go head to head tomorrow night. Chris Capuano and Clay Hensley, who shut the Mets out for five innings in that makeup game on Monday, they go Saturday. And Dylan G coming off a fine performance against Annabelle Sanchez Sunday afternoon. Interesting to see Volstead yeah. after Jack McKeon just publicly berated him after his last start. You know, it's a thing, Gary, that, and Ralph knows this better than I, that was a very common thing. If you weren't playing well, the newspapers would have a nice little story about. 
your inability to get outs or inability to get hits. Something that managers today most of the time shy away from doing, but not Jack McKeon. What about uh, Jason Bay? I mean, he, he, he hasn't been criticized at all. Right. I mean, he played well. in the old days. He would, well, he wouldn't be playing. <laughs> well, of course, in the old days, you didn't have four year multi yeah. billion dollar contract. That's true. And that certainly plays a part as well. So, Friday retired on a bloop to short, and now Nick Evans will bat for John Neese. And he says it's after six innings, gave up five runs, three of them earned on five hits. I remember I pitched the game. In San Francisco, and you know, one of those seven innings, four runs, uh, lucky enough to get the win. It wasn't a great start by any stretch of the imagination. And Davey Johnson came down on me as hard as hard could be, and he said that if Darling doesn't throw his breaking ball, he's never going to be have success here in the major leagues. So the next start, I pitched against Pittsburgh, did not throw any breaking balls, and struck out 11 and shut him out. And after the game, he said, "I told you." I told you that if he used his breaking ball, he'd be fine. <laughs> so there's no way for me to win. I was at a uh, meeting yesterday with Gaylord Perry. And speaking of San Francisco, Perry, of course, was a great pitcher for the, for the uh, San Francisco Ball Club. And uh, he was telling about the time uh, they said uh, he never had a home run. He had power. He could hit the ball out of the park at batting practice. Couldn't hit the curveball. And finally, they were talking about him. And, uh, Alvin Dark says no way he was the manager of the Giants at that time. Alvin Dark says they'll put the man on the moon before he hits a home run. And sure enough, they put the man on the moon before he was right, <laughs> except it was a half hour before yep. he hit his home run. <laughs> July the 20th, 1969. That's the day Gaylord hit his first home run. Of course, they also said they put a man on the moon before the Mets won the World Series. That's right. They were right about that, too. <laughs> just, just, just barely. Yeah, barely. Yeah. Well, the Mets, the, the Mets uh, did win in 69. Reyes pulls one down to first. Pujols makes the play himself, and it's a 1 2 3 inning for Westbrook. Ralph, we're looking forward to uh, seeing the special tonight on SNY. Although, well, Dan, at 7 o'clock, I'm looking forward to seeing it, and I'm sure they'll have some stuff in there. I might not want to see. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Conner, 50 amazing years coming up tonight. DJ Carrasco coming in as we go to the seventh. Who I believe at the time was a Mets coach when he said this, 
Any ball player that doesn't sign autographs for little kids ain't an American. He's a communist. Sounds like Rogers were but he was crusty. Yeah, he was. Uh, he wasn't a Bolshevik. I'll tell you that. D.J. Carrasco in for the Mets. Jonathan Neese went six innings, five hits, five runs, three earned, a walk and seven strikeouts. Carrasco here to keep this game close. Daniel Descalzo will lead off in the seventh inning. The pitcher Westbrook on deck, and then Nick Punto for the Cardinals in the seventh. Descalzo has one of the five St. Louis hits. He got the uprising started in the fifth, doubled to the right field corner, and came around to score. Cardinals tacked on three runs in that fifth inning, two of them unearned. Well, the Mets on the short end so far this afternoon, five to one in the seventh. Rasco gets ahead one and two. This is the seventh time this year that the Mets have gone into the final game of a series with a chance to sweep. Good off speed pitch by Carrasco to strike out Descalzo, and that's the first down. In their first six cracks at a sweep, they were successful the first time. That was against Arizona back in April. But since then, they have failed to sweep any other series. Westbrook pops one up, and due to looking for it in the sunshine. No sunglasses has to turn his head away but still makes the catch. How can you go on the field today without sunglasses. <laughs> I don't get it. You know the, what's what's difficult for the players not difficult you know they all have those real fancy sunglasses that you either wear on top of your hat or wear them all the time. And sometimes you don't need the sunglasses but you never know when it's going to peek out that's why those flip downs. The flip downs were always the best. Well, they still make flip downs, so yeah. I, I don't understand why players don't wear them. I guess uh, they they're, don't they're feel Murph, comfortable. Murph's got Murph. the right idea. I mean, because it makes perfect sense, right? Yeah, Murph's got some old school. <laughs> yeah, you you definitely want to uh, um, you know you want to account for any kind of changes that might happen. Here's Nick Punto with two out and nobody on. Punto hit the ground ball to Duda that he threw into the shoulder of Westbrook. That led to a couple of unearned runs scoring for the Cardinals in the fifth. Punto is 0 for 3. And the curveball hit out to right, and Beltron is there. So it's a 1 2 3 inning for DJ Carrasco. He comes on, throws seven pitches, and gets the side. Seventh inning stretch time. Westbrook back to the mound, up 5 1. Brought to you by AT&T. Rethink possible. By eHarmony. Love begins here. 
and City Card Holders. Tickets are now on sale for a special access Chalk Talk event with Sandy Alderson and Mookie Wilson. Log on to CityPrivatePass.com for more info. Justin Turner leads off the home seventh inning for New York against Jake Westbrook, who has thrown only 63 pitches to get through six innings. Mets have been hitting ground ball after ground ball against Westbrook, who has staked his career on being a ground ball machine. Turner drove in the only Met run with a ground out in the fourth inning after a leadoff triple by Reyes. Mets have had only two hits in this game. After racking up six runs and nine hits last night in a come from behind victory. Punto has six ground ball outs just by himself at second base and has turned two double plays. Mm. Generous call on the outside corner and it's one and two. Now Westbrook over the course of his career has been one of the most prolific ground ball pitchers in the game and he gets another one here. Free side arms it. And gets Turner for the first down. Here comes Beltron with one out. Carlos has taken a call third strike and brought a walk over one. And a curveball in for a strike, nothing in one. And a slow ground ball. And there's Punto again. Another chance for the second baseman. And quickly there are two out. This year, Westbrook came into the day recording 57.8% of his outs on ground balls. That's the second highest percentage in the majors behind the Pirates' Charlie Morton. That's almost Brandon Webb like when Brandon Webb was the Cy Young Award winner. So, two way now, Murphy. Who has flied to center and grounded into a double play? The Mets have had very little going on offensively today. Waving that glove, telling him to make sure you get this ball outside. Very interesting. I don't think I've ever seen a catcher do that before. And it was outside. <laughs> Two and one to Murphy. Well, Westbrook has really been using the aggressiveness against the Mets today. He's been throwing strikes enough that they have to swing the bat. Murphy lines one to center, but Jay is there, and it's a one-two three inning for Westbrook. He's retired seven in a row, and he's easily through seven with a five to one lead.
We've had seven year streaks with 300 plus average and 30 or more home runs. Well, we know one of them is in the game today. Pools. Mike Piazza, who we referenced earlier. Oh, and yeah, Ruth and Gehrig. They were good, too. That's right. Back, Pujols has the record 10 straight years. Now, he's going to be hard pressed to extend it this year. He should be able to get to 30 home runs. He hit his 21st today. But 300 might be difficult. If he has about 550 at bats, Pujols would have to hit somewhere around 338 the rest of the year to finish the year at 300. Could easily do that, by the way. That sounds like a, a crazy number. He's one of those guys that can hit 350 for two months easily. John Jay is two for three today. Carrasco's ahead of him 0 and 2. And DJ misses upstairs. Jay doubled and scored in front of Pujols' home run in the first inning. Then he hit that ground ball up the middle that struck the second base bag and went for a hit and led to a bad decision by Pagan as the Mets kind of fell apart defensively in the fifth inning. And a two to one game turned into a five to one game. I like those pictures that we had of Piazza and Pujols and Ruth and Gehrig. They have all this newest technology and the beautiful color picture. And what are your eyes drawn to? The two black and white photos. Mm. <laughs> it's true, you know. <laughs> Popped up. Long way to go for Murphy near the tarp. And he makes a nice grab. That's a really tough angle for Murphy. And he played that very well. You no, know, he doesn't know how far he is. Once he hits that dirt. He knows he's getting close, but he didn't hit it until he made the catch. And you can see protecting himself at the same time. But great hustle by Murph. Ball Finds it, drifts back over his head, and makes the play. Ball just didn't have enough air under it for Reyes to get over there. He would have had a better angle, so Murphy did a good job handling it himself. So here's Pujols, who delivered the keynote today with a two run homer off the facing of the second deck in left field. The, the IO TV pitch differential on that Pujols home run. He wanted that outside, kind of a backdoor cutter, and just came middle, middle, like it was on a tee. That happens. You know, you're going to make mistakes. You just hope it isn't against these hitters, even though he struggled early in the series. To that 300 homers, his first eight years, only he and Ralph Kiner have done that. That'll probably be in the feature tonight. Who holds, of course, a free agent at the end of the year. And so much speculation as to where he will wind up, whether back in St. Louis or elsewhere. Hits one off the end of the bat to center field. And Pagan comes in to grab it. Two away. So five up and five down for Carrasco. Let's check in with Chris Carlin for a New York State Smokers quit line game break. That's early, Chris. The Blue Jays usually hit three home runs by the time game's over. Well, the way Fister has gone, that's mm. his run for the day. That's exactly right. He has been the unluckiest pitcher in baseball. Well, you know what's strange is that the Mariners were two and a half out at the All Star break. They lose 11, or close to the All Star break, and Texas wins 11. Yep. Texas had their 12 game winning streak stopped, stopped last night by the Angels. Holiday takes it low and away. Holiday has been up three times, struck out all three, so he is. Facing the potential of the dreaded golden sombrero. You can say it. Keith's not here. Yeah, but he's watching. <laughs> he just muttered under his breath. <laughs> Fouled off the right side, and Carrasco's ahead one and two. What do you think? You think Pujols stays with the Cardinals? Yes. I think so too. I just think they have too much to lose letting him get away. Uh, he's uh, you know plays a big part civically in that town um, does a lot of work for charity um, and then rock solid as a ball player of course sidearm delivery hit out to right field and Beltron back in the mo zone to grab it a one two three inning for Carrasco he set down all six to face him to the bottom of the eighth we go with the Mets down by four.
Hard to take on the Marlins. Start of a 10 game road trip. Mike Pelfrey on the mound against Chris Volstad. 6.30 the coverage tomorrow right here on SNY. Well, obviously they were thinking of the 18, 17, 16 there when they did that board, right? Strawberry, Keith, Dot. Greatest numbers in uh, Mets history of those numbers. Best 18 was Straw. Best 17, Keith. Best 16, Doc. Not Daesung Koo. <laughs> no. <laughs> Manny Acosta up in the Mets bullpen. No one can run with a weighted ball better than Koo. Pagan has been up twice, grounded out to second base both times against Westbrook, who's gotten 14 ground ball outs this afternoon. And just through his 75th pitch in the eighth inning, he has been masterful. The Mets have had just two hits. Westbrook has not had a complete game this year. He's gone as far as eight innings once. And certainly has a chance to do both those things today. Well, Carstens for Pittsburgh threw 83 pitches in a complete game for Pittsburgh. I said, how did he do it? Well, I'm watching it today. I think um, Maddox once had a 68 pitch complete game. I had a, low, a real low one, and it was under two hours the game, way under two hours against Atlanta. First game after the All Star break. Yeah, people were still at home. <laughs> a little jet lag. Yeah. One two to Pagan. Got him with a fastball. That's only the second strikeout of the afternoon for Westbrook. He got Beltron looking way back in the first. Well, this ball's supposed to be inside, cutting, and he's thrown a lot of cutters today to left handed hitters. And this one kind of backed up and stayed up in the strike zone, just missed by Pagan. No, Westbrook keeps rolling. That's eight in a row. He's retired. Lucas Duda coming up. Well, if the Mets don't get a couple of base runners, Carlos Beltran may have had his last at bat of this game. As Duda pokes one to left field, and that falls off the glove of Holiday, and Duda will be able to go to second base. So Holiday trying to make the sliding grab, but couldn't quite come up with it, and Duda winds up with a double. Well, tries to make the play, hits him right in the left wrist. Doesn't catch any leather, a little bit of leather, but a nice try by Holiday coming in on that play, which to most people reminds you of the play that he didn't make in the playoffs. Well, the one in the playoffs was a lot easier to of catch. Course. It was about waist high. This one he had to slide for. Here are Chula hot sauce. Who's hot for the Mets? Beltron, Harrison, and Duda all swinging about. Well, in fact, Duda with two hits today, now nine for his last 19. And here's Ronnie Polino. So the Mets have their third hit of the day. Polino has grounded out twice, once into a double play. Anyway, it's it could well be Carlos Beltran's last home game as a Met. Certainly, the, the trading rumors are there. To look at Westbrook's pitch count, I, I find it fascinating what was written about Beltran and the trading prospects today. This notion of can you believe the Mets would consider trading him within the division? Now that to me doesn't make any sense. Carlos Beltran is a two month rental player. Who cares where the Mets trade him? That's right. I mean, if they trade him, he's going wherever he's going till the end of this season, and then he'll be a free agent. Right back to Westbrook, he holds Duda and gets the out at first. Well, I know some folks are going to make the argument yes, but, but you're trading him within the division. If you're trading Carlos Beltran, you have given up on the division. And to me, you know, there's been the talk of, well, if, if the Phillies get him, maybe they'd be willing to give up Dominic Brown. To me, that's a much greater report that the Phillies would consider trading their best prospect within the division because, you know, if the Mets get Dominic Brown, he might be here for 10 years. Exactly. No, they, they are the ones that are on the hold for a player that could really haunt them. Mm -hmm. Not the not the Philadelphia Phillies or the Atlanta Braves. They have the two month rental and then folks will say what well, well what if they give him an extension well he's going to be a free agent anyway right. they could just as well sign him as a free agent anyway. Right he's bouncing back it's such an odd position that the Mets are in with Beltron continuing to play and play well every day and I think it's particularly poignant with David Wright coming back to the lineup tomorrow that. 
you know, if Beltron is traded in the next 10 days, then Terry Collins will have basically never had the lineup that he envisioned going into spring training. I mean, Ike Davis, if he does come back, is only going to come back much later in the year, and Beltron might be gone. Bay missed the first part of the year. Pagan was out for a month. He's never had his whole lineup intact the way he thought he would. Not even mentioning Santana. Well, you're right, and I know that when you sign as a manager or go to a new organization, you envision, right? Boy, I'm looking at our team. We got a nice lineup. We throw those guys out there every day. We can really make something happen. Well, that has not been the case injury-wise for the Mets. Pridey lines one to left center. That's a base hit, and that'll chase home Duda. Jay cuts it off. Jason Friday in the lineup for the injured Jason Bay picks up an RBI single and gets the Mets within three. It's five to two. Well, this is the first time we've seen Jake Westbrook Westbrook up in the strike zone. The balls have really been on the knees or lower. This one about thigh high, a nice hitting by Friday. Something that the Mets, other than pulling to the second baseman, should have tried earlier in the game. Now Scott Harrison gets the call here as a pinch hitter. The Mets have a couple of left hand hitters on the bench in Harris and Tolley. Taking a chance on the bomb here. He's got his best power hitter off the bench. Taking a chance that he can take advantage of Westbrook despite the ground balls he's given up. And it's inside the Harrison ball one. So Mitchell Boggs up in the bullpen for the Cardinals. The Mets if you're their offense you're trying to do anything as Acosta gets more loose for the Mets anything. To get Westbrook out of this game. Try someone else. Door number two. Harrison pinch hit in the game last night at a soft liner to second. Mets need one more base runner to get the tying run to the plate here in the eighth. And Harrison takes a strike one and one. And the Mets with a two out run here in the eighth inning. That's 56 of their last 91 runs that have come with two out. It's been phenomenal. Reyes would be next. And Harrison takes a strike on that cutter one and two. The numbers don't look pretty for Harrison but he's had some big hits lately. Sixteen pitches this inning the most he's thrown in any inning this this uh, this game. And he gets. Harrison with the breaking ball to end the bottom of the eighth. Third strikeout for Westbrook. The Mets poke back with one run, still trail five to two.
Five to two, St. Louis. Manny Acosta will take over the pitching for the Mets in the ninth. Pitch really well of late. That's given up a run in seven of his last eight games and five straight for Manny. Look at those splits, though. Right, he's hitting 435 mm. against him. The lefty just 219. Fernando Salas, the Cardinal closer, is up in the bullpen. Lance Berkman leads off the ninth against Acosta. DJ Carrasco pitched two innings in relief, retired six in a row. Berkman one for three today, and he lifts the first one out to left center. As Pridey drifts over onto the track to grab it, one away. So one pitch and one out for Acosta, who last pitched on Saturday against the Phillies, a scoreless inning. There have been only nine hits in this game. The Cardinals have five, the Mets have four. The decisive inning to date was the fifth, when a couple of Met errors helped the Cardinals to three runs. And those three runs right now, the difference in the game for Jake Westbrook. Westbrook had a speed bump in the eighth inning, gave up a run. He's only thrown 90 pitches. Be interesting to see if Tony La Russa lets him start the ninth. There's a strike to David Freeze, nothing in one. Westbrook has 13 complete games. His last one came in May of last year. Freeze is 0 for 3. And the breaking ball in for a strike. Nothing in two. Yadier Molina on deck. John Deese went six innings today. He's on the hook. He allowed five runs. Three of them earned on five hits. A walk, seven strikeouts. Boy, 96 miles an hour. We haven't seen that very often from Manny. Here's the one two and that fastball fouled off again at 96. Just watching Acosta it looks like he's cutting loose in a way that we're not accustomed to seeing. Yeah we've seen uh, Manny trying to really aim sometimes that ball at the corners. Is that good enough stuff to let it go. Line to second and caught by Turner two down. Got that one at 97 miles an hour. So freeze retired two away. Now there's got to be something about pitching on a nice hot afternoon that just makes you feel like you own the world. It really does. Uh, everything feels loose. Uh, you feel like all those adhesions are gone <laughs> and you really can cut loose. Tougher tougher on the starting pitchers of course to weather and negotiate them through the hot weather. Yanni and Molina is 0 for 3. Last time up, he had a liner to third, and Murphy made a nice lunging grab. So, Zivon, navigate through rough terrain. That's what you have to do. Like a bridge over troubled waters. <laughs> <laughs> Molina went around, and it's 1 and 1. Daniel Descalzo would be next. Well, the Mets will have the top of the batting order coming up in the bottom of the ninth. Reyes Turner, and yes, Beltron will get another. Turn it bad before the Mets head out on their road trip. And the breaking ball in for a strike. One and two to Molina. And Costa looking very sharp. Yadier, the youngest and the best yes. of the catching Molinas. They're all pretty good, though, weren't they? Sharply up the middle. Molina's got himself a base hit. So a two out single for Yadier Molina. That snaps an 0 for 16 skid for him. And brings Daniel Descalzo to the plate with two out and a runner on. Let's see, maybe Benji was probably the most dangerous hitter of all the Molinas. Jose was known mostly for his defensive calling of the game, and Yadier probably the best of both worlds. <laughs> Oh, this pool saying to Molina, get the ball because he hasn't had a hit in so long. That's <laughs> cold. Well, when you have a longtime teammate like that, you can go there. He was 0 for 10 to start the series, mm -hmm. but he has bragging rights now after the first inning. Yeah, Pujols hit a Pujolsian shot <laughs> off the facing of the second deck in left field to get the Cardinals started. His 21st of the year. There goes Molina, a swing and a miss, and Molina steals a base. He got an enormous jump against Acosta, who didn't look at him at all. Second stolen base of the year for Molina. 
I mean, he got about eight strides toward second before Acosta let the ball go. Well, honestly, it's something that uh, the Mets, when they go on their road trip, will be something they might want to take a look at and figure out. And what I mean by that, there's been some stolen bases against them late in the game that when you have to pay a little more attention, I mean, it's five to two, it's not ten to two. Right. Acosta ahead on Descalzo one and two. And you know hearkening back to the first couple of innings of this game. Cardinals were in angry mode today. Yeah. And I'm sure that. That had something to do with Molina looking to steal that base as well. Full count now to Descalso. Skip Schumacher has come out on deck to be a pinch hitter for the pitcher, Westbrook, if Descalso can keep the inning going. So it looks like Westbrook is done after eight. And a fine eight innings for him, matching his longest effort of the year. 3 2, and that's too high. Ball four, so Acosta, after retiring the first two, gives up a single and a walk. And now the Cardinals have two out and two on. Jerry Collins doesn't have Jason Isringhausen or Bobby Parnell available today, with each having thrown the last two days. In fact, if he had a save opportunity today, it was going to go to Pedro Beato. That ship has sailed. Now Schumacher. Who started the first two games of the series at second base? He was two for two last night. And he fouls one away. Remember, the Cardinals hit for Schumacher last night in the seventh inning when Burdak came in the game. It was Tony Cruz, their uh, backup catcher, right handed hitter, faced Burdak. Burdak did a nice job getting him to ground out with the runner on third base, and Beato cleaned up the inning by getting Pujols to pop up. Schumacher punches one to center. On comes Pagan. Sliding. Can't get it. Bounces off his face. And into score comes Molina to make it 6 to 2, St. Louis. So Schumacher gets the pinch hit, single to drive and a run. And Angel Pagan's rough afternoon continues. Well, this ball was not hit as hard. Kind of up on the label. Schumacher fought it off. Nice hitting by Skip. And Manny Ocasta got. Two quick outs, not able to close this inning. As Pagan almost got that in the chin. Tim Burdak now getting up in the Mets bullpen, so it looked like it was going to be a quiet inning for Acosta. Two out and nobody on. Has turned into trouble. He was ahead in the count on Molina, couldn't put him away. Molina got the hit and stole the base. He was ahead in the count on Descalzo, couldn't put him away. He walked him. And now Schumacher with the pinch hit single to drive in a run. Now for you folks at home, you don't think it's a big deal for the catcher Molina to steal that base, but when you're in a five to two game, you're fighting to make sure that you hold that deficit where it is, give yourself a chance to win. Now the Mets in a whole lot of trouble. Here's Nick Punto, who's 0 for 4 today. And all of a sudden, Acosta having trouble throwing strikes. People always think about playing 27 hard outs on the offensive end. They don't always think about it on the defensive end. Just as important. This game is so unrelenting, isn't it? Last night, Angel Pagan was the hero, celebrated, pie in the face. That was about 13 hours before this game began. And since this game started, nothing's gone right for Angel. Mitchell Boggs up in the Cardinal bullpen. Honestly, I don't know how everyday players handle it. Well, I, I think the uh, best everyday players put the day before to bed as soon as they leave the clubhouse. Which is great when you have a bad day. It must be awfully hard when you have a good day. I, I think that if you are a an exceptional player, one of the top in the league, Gary, you don't even think about it. You know, you had a great day, great. How am I going to get four for four tomorrow? It's just that they quickly 
just let it roll off. I think the the people that can least celebrate great performances are the great players because they're ready for the next day. Now Costa's 1-2 and Punto down swinging to end the inning, but the Cardinals tack on an insurance run. Mets will come up in the bottom of the ninth. Reyes, Turner, and Beltron down 6-2. in the game in right field and Mitchell Bonds will try and finish off the afternoon for the Cardinals. He's really been their eighth inning guy and was not up in the bullpen but as soon as the Cardinals pushed one more across Fernando Salas who's their closer sat down and Boggs has the night. We'll say Reyes will lead off for the Mets in the last of the night. Reyes one for three today triple to left center his 16th triple of the season and scored the first Met run. That was in the fourth. Reyes just three for 13 in this series. It'll be Reyes, Turner, and Beltron to try and get something started against Boggs in the ninth. And Free is again way in at third base against Jose, who takes a fastball for a strike. Boggs making his second appearance in this series, pitched a scoreless inning on Tuesday night. And Reyes golfs one down the right field side. Foul. Into that blue clad camp crew. Well, it's been a very quick game, and what that's meant is that most of the camp groups have been here from the first through the ninth. I don't know if the players still do it, but there was a time in, in uh, my generation of ball players that we were asked to go up to those camps and talk to the kids and, and play ball with them for an afternoon. I don't know if that happens anymore. Now the one two for Bonds and Reyes tops one foul. Well, Westbrook went eight innings allowed two runs and four hits a walk three strikeouts. Ninety pitches he was in command. Fifteen ground ball outs in eight innings for Jake Westbrook. Let's look at some of the. Camp folks. Oh, they got the SpongeBob shirts. <laughs> Outstanding. SpongeBob and Dora the Explorer were both here today to entertain the kids and trample the mound during the first pitch ceremony. I know SpongeBob a little. I don't know the Explorer. Dora? Got to love Dora. Two two. And Reyes now tips it. Molina holds it. 
And that is the first strikeout for Reyes after 87 plate appearances without a strikeout. It was an extraordinary streak that Reyes had going that just came to an end. Coming up tonight on Geico Sports Night, more coverage of today's game and everything New York sports. Tonight, 10:30, SNY. Geico Sports Night. Here's Justin Turner, who's 0 for 3. Turner drove in the first med run with a ground out, and he lines one to left field. Holiday will have to play it on a hop. And Turner has his first hit of the day. And the Mets fifth. So a one out base runner and Carlos Beltran will come to bat. The right fielder, Carlos Beltran. <laughs> Well, Met fans don't know for sure, but many of them are saying farewell as Carlos Beltran steps in for what might be his last Met at bat at City Field. Carlos signed with the Mets as a free agent before the 2005 season. He endured a very difficult first year, but. 06, 07, 08, he was an extraordinary performer for the Mets. 09, injuries, 10, more injuries, but he has come back and had an extraordinary 2011, which has made him the hot commodity that he is on the trade market. It's a long time, six and a half years with one ball club. Best all around outfielder to ever play, ever wear that Mets uniform. And I think you can say that. Unequivocally. We don't know that he's going. But if he is. He's had quite a run. Popped up. On comes the left fielder holiday. And that's the second out. Some in the crowd acknowledging Beltran as he comes back into the Mets dugout, perhaps for the final time. So now Murphy with the Mets down to their final out. By the way, we mentioned Reyes going 87 of plate appearances without a strikeout. That's the longest span for a Met without a strikeout since 1982, when Bob Baylor oh. went 94 plate appearances without a strikeout. But it's not even close to the club record. You know what the club record is? 167 plate appearances without a strikeout. Felix Mion. What did I say in second baseman? Oh. Yeah. 1974, of course, Felix you know, choked up about a foot and a half on the bat. So he was a quintessential contact guy. But for a guy like Reyes, who, you know, for a long part of his career was a really free swinger, it's quite an accomplishment. Murphy takes one the other way foul. And now the Mets are down to their last strike. Well, we know that Beltron is getting ready to get on the plane with the Mets going down to Miami. The trading deadline is 10 days away. And the Mets will spend all of that time on the road. Turner starts to run, but time was called. <laughs> that was very a funny. plastic bag was blowing somewhere near Daniel Murphy, and he has for time. Turner as was, Turner was running. He was halfway to second base, and Murph called time on him. Took away, uh, well, <laughs> didn't really take away anything. The uh, DI. You can't play Murph. No. You can't swing with a plastic bag swirling at your feet. Now Turner runs and Murphy fouls it off and Turner can come back again. It's going to be interesting to see on this next road trip road trip Gary because the Cardinals Murph's got his hits but the Cardinals have pitched Murphy in better than any team so far in the last month since he's been red hot. There's a rally caps going. So it'll be interesting to see if the Marlins Reds and Nationals try to continue that. Murph just two for 13 in this series. 
Turner runs again. Murphy takes it. Molina boxes it. And Turner is on second on defensive indifference. Which I believe is an I in your scorecard. Or a DI. I never, in, in, you know, the instructions of how to score that used to be in the back of the Mets program for years. It, it doesn't have never, that one. Never said anything about defensive indifference. I don't think they had invented defensive indifference when we were kids. Be indifferent and don't put anything. There's far too much indifference these <laughs> days. Here's the one two and Murphy hits one out to right center field. Back toward the gap is Jay to call and he makes the grab that ends the ball game. So the Cardinals salvage the finale of the three game series. Great pitching by Jake Westbrook. A big home run in the first inning from Albert Pujols as the Mets take two of three but lose the finale in what could be Beltron's final home game as a Met. Well not too much to say about today's game in the third fifth sorry fifth inning we saw Jonathan Nee suffer from some bad defense but also he walked the pitcher which really set up that inning and Tony La Russa's crew salvages the last game of the series. And the Mets move on to a long road trip, not to be back here at City Field till the first of August. Fastest game of the year for the Mets, two hours and seven minutes as you look at the Audi game summary. Jake Westbrook, best he's been this year, goes to eight and four on the season with eight stellar innings. John Deese takes the loss. Six to the final Cardinals win it back with more from City Field in just a moment.